Hi, this is Brad Linder with Mobile Computing, and uh, I'm here with a Google Nexus One phone, which has just been flashed with the uh, updated Android 2.2 Froyo. And I just want to show you a couple of the things that I've uh, I've only been playing around with it for a couple of minutes, but I want to show you a couple of things I've seen so far. First of all, uh, you'll notice that on the bottom there's this uh, these persistent buttons. So instead of just having the program launcher button like you normally do, um, whenever you're on the home screen, whichever home screen you're on, you've got the phone button and the browser button. Phone brings up the phone, uh, call log, contacts, etc. And the browser, of course, brings up the browser. Now, one of the second things you're going to notice is that uh, in the Android market, it now has a uh, program for Adobe Flash Player 2.1. This is the beta version of Flash Player. It's still uh, a little bit buggy, but I went to the uh, Fox website, and uh, even though this page is not optimized for mobile devices, I was able to start playing an episode of Family Guy. I mentioned it's not optimized for mobile devices. So you can see playback's a little bit choppy, um, but it does play. And we'll see if we can make it stop playing. Well, let's just go out of there. So, um, so Adobe Flash Player does work. Uh, it's a little bit buggy. It doesn't include hardware acceleration at this point. Uh, some sites are going to work better than others. Uh, it doesn't work with Hulu because there aren't content partnerships in place to uh, to make Hulu work. A um, couple of other things that are really nifty, mostly under the settings here. Uh, one thing that you'll notice under settings is tethering and portable hotspot. You can actually use your I don't know how well you can see it there because of the glare, but um, you can enable that and what it'll do is it'll uh, use your 3G connection and uh, instead of receiving on Wi-Fi, you'll start transmitting on Wi-Fi. So you, you can essentially share the 3G connection with a laptop or other portable device, um, iPod Touch, iPad, whatever you, you like, um, and share your 3G connection through this device. It sort of turns it into a, a MiFi, and it's uh, really nice. Um, my 3G connection is a little bit slow today, so I haven't gotten a lot of use out of that feature, but I, I definitely appreciate having it. Another thing that's new here is if you click on Applications and... Uh, Manage applications, you'll see that there's a new on SD card option. And now, how well you can see that. There we go. So uh, it says on SD card. And um, it turns out that in order to install applications onto the SD card, you need uh, new versions of the applications. The developers need to enable it to be installed on an uh, SD card. So right now, there's nothing on there. All my applications are uh, on the uh, main memory. But in the future, you'll be able to move, manually move applications over to the SD card or install them to the SD card. Um, the other thing that you'll really notice here is that the... Um, Everything just seems a little bit faster. It's got a new uh, just-in-time uh, Java compiler, which means that native applications aren't going to uh, seem too different, but the uh, uh, third-party applications are really much more responsive. So one of the uh, slowest applications that I've been using lately is Fennec, which is the uh, mobile version of Firefox. And um, because this is an early beta release of Fennec, it uh, does tend to be really slow, but much, much faster, much more responsive. Doesn't really uh, increase the page rendering too much, but the uh, application uh, just doesn't seem to take as long when you're moving from place to place, launching new tabs, exact, and uh, uh, things like that. So uh, Fennec seems to be much more manageable, even though that's a pre-alpha release of Fennec. Um, another thing that's kind of nice here is if you go into the Android market, there's a new Update All button. So I've got two updates here. If I click the Update All, it's going to go ahead and download all of the updates. And I believe there's also, I haven't uh, seen this yet, but I believe there's also an option to uh, automatically install updates as they come in. Um, I forget where that is. Maybe it's under Applications or Manage Applications. No, I'm um, not quite sure where that is, but I'll, uh, I'll find that soon and uh, maybe put an update on the blog. And, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much, you know, the things that are going to strike you at first. There's some other uh, uh, changes, too. For example, the Gmail application has a slightly new look to it. But the, the main things that you're going to notice are the uh, uh, ability to tether, the increased speed, um, 
the new Android market is uh, not really available yet in that um, you're supposed to be able to install applications through the website using a desktop computer and right now that's just not uh, possible but uh, it will be soon. There's also a couple of new widgets so let's go ahead and add a widget uh, one thing that I noticed was there's a new home screen tips widget it just sort of tells you different things you can do with the home screen it's not really that exciting Alright, there's the Google search widget, and instead of just searching the web like you could previously, or searching your uh, built-in data, um, you can now create an apps widget, a context widget, a web widget, an all widget. So let's say, uh, make an apps widget. Makes it a lot easier to find the applications you're looking for. So. If you've got more than a dozen applications on your phone, it's going to be a lot faster to find them maybe by typing for them instead of scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. If you want a multi-purpose widget, you can press and hold. Well, that's interesting. create an all widget. Move that up higher. I used to think there's something visible up there. So now when we search for Fennec, it's going to search my contacts, it's going to search uh, my applications, it's going to search the web. If we just say go, it'll actually give us a web search, but I can also scroll down there and open the application. So there you go, there were a couple of the first features. Oh, another thing that's actually kind of neat here is, let's go ahead and open the web browser again. You can rotate the screen, and in the past you could only rotate in one direction. I've gotten very used to having the trackball on the side, uh, on the right side, but you can also now rotate in the other direction. You can't rotate upside down, but I can't quite imagine why you'd want to anyway. But uh, if you want to have the trackball on the right, you can have the trackball on the right. If you want to have it on the left, you can have it on the left. A uh, number of other changes under the hood here to uh, Google Android 2.2 Proyo, but these are just a couple of the first ones that I've noticed and I uh, wanted to share them with you. This is Brad Linder at MobyPewting. Make sure to check out MobyPewting.com for more updates on uh, Android 2.2 and uh, other Android, iPhone, Windows Mobile, Blackberry, and uh, other smartphone news.